when we got married, we decided we are open to life. Conception is an act of God. And if God allows, God will take care of it. When you go for mass in the morning, and then you come back and do your work, and then you go back home, everything fits into place because I'm giving the most important time for God. Dr. Gerard and Nicola Brio live in Houston with their bustling family of nine children. Their busy home is built on the solid foundation of their shared faith. I have been raised a cradle Catholic and my parents and their parents before them have been Catholic as well. And so we, I remember when we were little, we would always go to mass and we would go uh, frequent the sacrament of confession. And uh, I was confirmed in uh, grade school so for me, a uh, cradle Catholic born in Bangalore, uh, went for Sunday Mass, not daily Mass, and uh, would go for confession because uh, I had to go. There was no choice, maybe Christmas or Easter. And uh, sometimes I would go for my, uh, my mom for a walk and she would go to the adoration. I was wondering, I think it's a waste of time. And so that's how I grew up. Then when I uh, came to America, uh, what do you call, I became more dependent on the rosary. Then when we got married and our child was born soon after, we started reading the Word of God from the Word among us. And that I give credit to my wife. So that has really changed our spirituality when reading the Word of God. But we are, our bonus for the last 14 years or so has been our uh, date night, which is on Fridays. And we go to the uh, Adoration Chapel. So we signed up for the 10 o'clock hour together when the children were little, we would take some of them, and uh, some of them would watch the, so the older ones would watch the younger ones, we would take the middle ones with us. This two decade long journey of building a family started as a long distance relationship initiated by a family member. So we met because my uh, a relative of ours in India uh, wrote to my mom about Jerry. And then, um, so we called him, my mom called him and, and introduced us. Wife and me, we spoke together almost every other day for at least more than half an hour or 45 minutes every day. He actually said he would come up to Toronto for a medical conference on the weekend and uh, he booked the tickets, but we didn't know what we looked like. So we exchanged pictures um, on a Monday and we, we got them on a Thursday. And uh, uh, so I could ID him at the airport and pick the right guy. <laughs> bring him home. So my sister and I went and picked him up and uh, on on Friday. So we got each other's pictures on Thursdays and uh, met face to face on Friday and we decided to get married on Sunday. Though they could never count all the blessings in their lives, their most precious blessings are easy to count. Nine beautiful children. Being a father of nine, it's very humbling that uh, coming from India, coming from a family of four and my wife, a family of two, and then God blessing you with these nine kids. You know, Psalm 127, children are a gift from God, right? And these nine gifts, uh, a lot of fun. Yes, it's a lot of work, especially when they were small, but even that work was a lot of fun. Every time when I go for adoration, first thing I do is to thank God for these nine gifts. Okay, ready? Michael is our oldest and he's always been uh, very responsible and very, uh, you know, on top of it, he'll, if he has a job to do, he will get it done. He also helps to make sure that all the other little jobs are done. Daniel is, uh, he's an entrepreneur. You know, I was very impressed with his, uh, 
he did an internship with NASA and then one with Apple and then one with Google and so he's gone all through that and he's just in his uh, fourth year. And then we have Christine and she has always been very uh, kind to her siblings. So if they have any um, issues with getting along in their classes or with their schoolwork, they will actually go to her and ask for her advice. Maria is more of a contemplative. She always thinks, she always reads, and she's always silent. And you have to get to ask her what's on your heart, and she'll tell you. And then we have Jane, and Jane is a very gentle soul. She, she's a good listener, so she'll listen to, if, we're, if the whole family is talking, she'll be one of the quieter ones listening. Then we have Rachel, and Rachel is always smiling. You know, I'm not sure where she got that genetic trait. She's always smiling. And now she's playing volleyball. Uh, this is the only abrio to go into sports in that kind of setting. And next we have John, who is very enthusiastic about everything he does. So if we're going to play volleyball outside, he'll be right in there getting the ball. And um, if we go on a trip, he'll be packing his bags five days in advance. And it's it's just down to Galveston for a couple of days, but he's very enthusiastic about getting into it. Then we have Luke, and uh, Luke is a very quiet uh, person. He's the most quiet of the whole nine, uh, but very hardworking at, at his work and his violin. He loves to play soccer, so we call him the Zico. Finally, we have Joseph, who is uh, the baby who is not really a baby anymore, but he sometimes gets treated like a baby, so he, I think he still gets the most kisses, the most hugs, the most cuddles. Nicole and Gerard wanted to instill Christian qualities in their children, so they chose to homeschool them. I think we started homeschooling because I was interested in it. I met a family who had uh, seven children at the time, and I had two at the time, and I thought, wow, if my two turn out half as good as any of those <laughs> I would like to. So, so I, I looked into it and I uh, learned a little bit about it from uh, that mother. So I thank my wife for convincing me to homeschool. And I think my children, when they look back, this will be the blessing that they will never forget. Daily mass, daily communion. And that made homeschooling, I think, in my opinion, all to come together because God gives the graces. I really like homeschooling is I think you get to go at your own pace, which means like you can also go ahead. I guess I prefer the independence that homeschooling gives you. So you're able to like go to classes once or twice a week and then you're kind of on your own to get your actual work done. Homeschooling was not without its unique set of challenges for the growing family. Well, I have sometimes scheduling problems. So one, one child needs to drive this way, another child needs to drive that way, and there's just me and one, I'm the only driver or the only available driver. So how does that work, you know? So we discovered carpooling where one mom will take, pick up my child, drop them off, and then another one picks them up and drops it off. If there were other problems, um, I always uh, have asked St. Joseph to sort them out, and he's always come through. And of course, I have my prayer warrior here who prays everything, and then it's always taken care of. So I initially thought the struggle would be that uh, they don't have peers, you know, they, what is it, what, the kids are going to go to school at home. So how can they get along with people? Like when I went to school, there were 90 or 100 people in my class, you know. Huh? But then they have a co-op, a co-op they do once a week. And you have the second grade who mixes around in the fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade. So that's better off than me. When I was second grade, I only had second grade. If you don't have discipline, when you have a lot of kids, you're gonna have chaos. So I don't think it's a challenge. I think that's an, uh, a responsibility for me and my wife to have discipline so that everything goes smoothly. Hmm? Uh, second uh, responsibility is to get them to know God because that's the most important thing that they're gonna learn for the rest of their life, right? And to do that, I've gotta do it first. I've gotta set the example.
Nicole's passion for music became a gift for the entire family. Since everyone in our family plays violin, it's very um, noisy because in the mornings is when we all practice. But it's really nice because the younger siblings can like go to the older siblings and get help. And since we've played for like our whole lives, we're very experienced. So I think it's a lot of fun that we all play violin. Uh, I think this summer is actually the first time that we've been regularly playing together. We play at mass. Um, the nine of us, and we all sit in one row, um, which is pretty nice. Like, Joseph is the youngest. He, this is his first summer where he's been able to play with us all um, and kind of improv with us all because the music is kind of weird to read. I always love the sound of the violin and I asked for violin lessons for my 16th birthday, but I never really practiced a whole lot. So I thought, okay, well, if I can't play, well, some, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to uh, uh, find a good violin teacher and get some of my kids to play so I can at least hear the sound of music. So Mrs. Stanley has been our teacher for 18, 19 years. Every Christmas season, we all play, uh, we invite a bunch of his patients to like the hospital uh, conference room and we just play Christmas carols for them and then they all get food after that and it's a lot of fun. Though they faced many hardships in their journey, their faith sustained them, even in the hardest times. My eighth child, Luke, Lou Cabrio uh, was in the stomach and we went to the hospital and my wife's labor was progressing. Uh, all of a sudden the doctor calls me and said, the heart rate is not doing well. I think the baby is going to sleep too much. So we're going to wake the baby up and do an ultrasound. Ultrasound was fine. And then all of a sudden the heart rate went so low. Okay, baby's heart rate is 140. His heart rate went to 60. So she told uh, Jerry, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to take this one. And I, I didn't know what that meant, but I, I had a little inkling that it might be that, you know, she'd have to have a C-section or something. And it did happen that way. And I knelt down and prayed. And on the TV screen was EWTN, photograph of a lady of Guadalupe. So the C-section was done in four minutes by the, by the gynecologist. And Luke had cord around the neck two times and a knotted cord two times. So he came this close to having a dangerous event. So the, I still believe but the Blessed Virgin Mary and Lady Guadalupe saved him. It just went very smoothly. I was unusually calm and uh, I just, you know, I, I said Hail Marys and four minutes later he was out. Both in hard times and day to day, the family is sustained by the values and traditions that each has grown to treasure. You gotta have love and sacrifice, you know? If you don't have sacrifice, then you don't have that quality love. And that's, if you don't have those two together, it's probably impossible to have a large family. If you wanna do something like spontaneously, it's harder to plan for that many people to do that uh, thing. But for day to day, um, it's so much fun to have uh, that many siblings. One of my favorite things of growing up in a big family was definitely going on vacations. They were so much fun. Um, we would go to like beach houses and it's just so much fun. Everybody just has like their little, uh, they'll like contribute to the whole vacation and it just makes it so much fun and I love it. Having a buddy system, so each of the, the four or three oldest, oldest kids had one of the little people to take care of in the morning and just seeing how everyone had to help each other and then you could teach your buddy how to do certain things so that you don't have to watch them. I guess how children grow up and that's like pretty interesting to see which maybe I wouldn't see that if I only had two or three younger siblings but I've seen like a lot of my younger siblings grow up. There's always someone to take you somewhere like if you want to go to the park, if you want to go to tennis, 
there's always someone who will like take you there. So yes, God has blessed us financially, humongously, but we are not attached to that. That's God given. So whatever God given, uh, there's a sister Ann Shields who taught us this thing and I met her in Michigan. There's a law of the vertical and the horizontal. So whatever God gives you, you're supposed to give away unless you need it, unless you absolutely need it. There's not really big things that I would want, but if I did, I would kind of have to think if, because living in a big family, you kind of just think if it's really needed or if like how much you want it and why you would use it and if you would share it and how much it could be used and if it's expensive. So all those thoughts go through your head and if like you really rethink each one of those questions, by the time you ask mom or dad, they, they'll they either like say yes if all those questions have a valid answer and a reasonable answer. And the answer will obviously be no if like you don't really want it, but you kind of just saw it and you want it. As a family, one of my favorite things to do with my siblings is definitely playing outside. Uh, we have so many siblings and a lot of them are very active. Um, so playing a sport is never a problem because we always have enough people for two teams. And that's one of the times when it gets really fun because it's like the oldest four versus the youngest five in like soccer. And so that gets really fun. I also like making music with, with groups, not just my family, but in general. But it's, it's probably extra special with my family because you know we're all like together. The best quality I see in my husband is the ability to um, look at issues, look at problems, look at even joyful moments f with a wider lens. A faith in God to bring children for mass every day increased my faith and also increased my desire to go for mass every day. She's very confident. Um, and when she does something, she does it with like her full heart uh, and she puts all of her like will into it. To really work hard for me and then with everyone else, for Mike and for Christine and Mia, I think he's inspired them to be a doctor since they're all doing, like Mike's doing biomedical science. Mia considered doing nursing, but then she did some other thing. And then Christine is also doing biomedical. And so they're using a, like, a lot of terms that I don't even know. And she'll really push you to do anything you want to do in the future. And that um, shows me that when you don't like it, she won't just give up on you because you're being stubborn or something. And that um, showed me a lot about her. This is not a family turned in on itself, but one that makes a deep impact on all those they encounter. So I don't usually introduce myself and say, hi, I'm Dan, I have nine siblings, or eight siblings. Um, it usually comes up later uh, as I get to know people better. Um, but I've definitely abused the having eight siblings and like, tell us an interesting fact about you. Uh, and it always makes people like, act very surprised. I really don't know how they react. I'm usually counting heads because we don't want to lose anyone. <laughs> and uh, so um, I, I really don't pay attention to, uh, you know, people will come up to me and say, oh, you have a beautiful family and, and I appreciate that. But uh, uh, I've always hoped that each one of us will be a shining light, the light of Christ to the world. It's kind of cool that you're different than other families and it's not like weird or anything. No family this big can avoid conflict, but they found their own unique way to settle disagreements and keep the peace. I'm like the Supreme Court. I'm the judge Supreme Court, so I've, I almost get no cases that come to me. 
So everything is settled out by this older children who settle out the issues with the younger children. Very rarely it comes to the mother, who's the next highest court. And uh, I've said almost in this 20 to 24 years, there has been a problem at all. There's no like huge conflicts where we have like huge fights and we hold a grudge for like a long time. We kind of either resolve it in between each other and we'll make like a deal. As the children grow and move out into the world, Nicole and Gerard pray they will continue to stand on the foundation of faith on which their family is built. When they grow up, they get to decide if um, they're going to continue in this beautiful faith that we've shared with them or not, but that's going to be their decision. But I think they realize that this is the faith, and if they have questions about it, uh, yes, it's good to have questions, but don't stick with the questions. Find answers. We have sown the seeds, right? That's all we can do. The rest is up to the Holy Spirit. So we're not so much concerned about the career they pick, but about the person they are growing into me. Turn back towards God. Rise up. <laughs>